Gemini friends, and welcome to your horoscope for October of 2020, where Gemini this month, we've got three moons happening, plus your ruling planet going retrograde. And that may sound like hot crazy, but it's really not. It's actually all going to be cool. It's all okay. And I think it's a completely useful month, but it's also beginning to be a little bit of an active month in terms of realigning with not only some strategy, especially some health things for you, but also I think it's a month where we can see a little bit progress in the domestic area for you. Now this month, the retrograde activity continues to come down, come down, come down. So it means that life picks up little by little, including in the global sense and in our outside world, what's around us, these things begin to pick up just a little bit at a time as well. So we also have that in our favor this month as well. So I look forward to telling you all about what looks like it's coming for you and breaking that down. But before we do that, man, the eat and greets are loaded with some beautiful astrologers this month. Jessica Lanyato will be here. We've got Basil Farrington, Sean and Shane M. Nygaard will be here, who also has a twin, Sean, who apparently I need to get over to the show as well. Melissa LaFara will be here. Um, Sarah D. Haven, um, Julio Pellegrini will be here. Natai, Kira Taborn will be here. So it is a busy month. I'm looking forward to bringing you all of that content. And now, if you want to watch the Eat and Greet playbacks, absolutely ad-free, you can come over and become a patron on my Patreon page and see that for absolutely free or see them absolutely ad-free. And if you don't want to do that, totally okay too. You can still watch them right here on YouTube. So whichever way you'd like to interact, I just made it available. And as the Patreon continues to grow and I can provide more in-depth things over there as well and really good delicious content for you guys there as well, I'll keep you posted, okay? But we got to start somewhere, right? All right, let's jump in here, Gemini, and see what's going on. First of all, happy fall, happy autumn. Welcome to a new season. It's beautiful. We have switched gears just a little bit. So it means for you, as we step here and we're into October and we're a couple weeks into this new season, it's okay to be in your switch of gears. It's okay to not have to be going and have the same attitude, have the same beliefs, have the same circumstances that were in your life in March, right? It's really not March 232nd day or anything like that. We really have moved on. It's just been very, very slow. Now, right here at the beginning of the month, we've got a full moon happening in the energy of Aries. Now, this is going to light up your 11th house space, the house of friends, groupings. Um, it's going to be a places you'd like to be recognized. You'd like to be seen your associations, your groupings, long range plans, goals, and designs. And I cannot tell you how much I think it's important that at this full moon, that's asking us to end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment. You maybe really are looking at this social lineup that you've got going on. Uranus is also retrograde this month. So maybe is there something going on in your technology life that you need to kind of have an upgrade or you need to adjust there. But also, Gemini, and your long range plans, what do you have set up? This is not a super forward moving moon because the retrograde, the planet that rules this moon is actually in retrograde. So it's more of a redefine, realign with the strategy kind of moon. And then you can get a lot out of it. It's really, really juicy if you'll dig into it in the 11th house. Truly, if there are friends, if there are people you've been associated with, acquaintances, that it's more like it's heavy weight at this time instead of something that you think can really be a part of your future, this would be a good time for you to take a look over that for sure. On the second, we see Venus moving into the energy of Virgo, lighting up the fourth house space for you. So she's bringing a harmony, bringing some diplomacy for sure. So, you know, if things with the housing arena, the domestic arena for you have felt kind of crazy, kind of out of bounds, or just felt unsettled, Venus coming in here actually brings a nice harmony. If there have been things with the family, this could also be too. Oh, I yeah, that makes a lot of sense that perhaps, you know, something with your family, there's a financial tie to the family that's actually actually in your favor. Like maybe there's a parent who says, you know, I, I'm not using this spare bedroom if you want to rent it out for an office or, you know, whatever the creative solutioning could be, that could definitely be something that Venus is magnetizing into this area for you. And if you have been looking to move or you're trying to get settled, I think that Venus is also a helper for you here as well to make this financially sound for you and have you moving or being 
in the places that you really can kind of call home and ground down into. But be meticulous. Be in the details of everything that's going on, especially after the 13th of the month when Mercury goes retrograde. Yes, you can still move into that new apartment. Yes, you can make that improvement in your home. You can do any of those things. But you want to be really very clear of the obligations and the details of your contracts or anything that you're signing, okay? On the 4th, we see Pluto coming direct and out of retrograde where he's been for the last four months. So this is going to bring that direct energy into your 8th house. We're just at the end of September. We saw Saturn coming out of retrograde. Now we have Pluto out of retrograde. And before that, Jupiter came out of retrograde. So at this point, we have that Capricorn Council out of retrograde here in your eighth house so you have learned you have crystallized saturn has taken you maturely to a different level pluto has knocked down tore down just destructed some things in this eighth house arena for you and now you're able to go ahead with that jupiter energy and build something that's wise and it's a wise structure here so in your joint resources connections between you and anybody else tied to your money any other sources tied to your money fear, anxiety, becoming independent, where you become independent but interdependent. Where do you have those relationships? Really this place of being able to stand on your own in those joint resources. I also think for some people it's just straight up about the taboo studies that you've been maybe kind of studying around. Have you been doing astrology, tarot, and now you're really ready to start coming out a little bit more because Pluto kind of helped you phoenix a little bit you died off over here and you're you're ready to live this this next lifestyle this next lifetime this like next story so certainly whatever has been destructive pluto as he's retrograde here now is also going to give you the courage i think to get ready to build in an evolved form here okay on the 13th, Mercury, your ruling planet, heads into retrograde at 12 degrees of Scorpio, where it will be retrograding back until we get to the 27th of the month. And as he retrogrades back on the 27th, that Mercury is going to move into the energy of Libra, and it will come out of retrograde um, November 3rd. So the dance is going to be between your 6th and your 5th houses with this particular retrograde. Now, with this 6th house retrograde, really, truly, Scorpio is deep. Scorpio is down in the dirty of how does this work? It's not meticulous like Virgo is. It actually is not looking at all of the nitty gritty of things. It's like, how does this work together? If I take this apart, what's inside of here, right? So as Mercury's in Scorpio and you start thinking about and evaluating your health, your daily routine, what's going on in your mind? What are you communicating? What are these independent projects in the sixth house that maybe are freelance that you want to be working on? Scorpio's got it cracked open. Mercury is getting into the depths of how how does this actually work? Is this what I really want to be talking about? Does this have depth? Does this have weight? Does this have value? Right? Am I eating good things? Because maybe this Mercury and Scorpio in your sixth house is like, hey, Gemini, we need to detox a little bit. Right? Scorpio is like, ah, let's pull some things out. Pull that out. So there could be a detoxing quality that's also available during this retrograde for you. But standard things in a retrograde, you're going to go back, reconnect, revise, re-edit. You know, is this a project coming back to you? Oh, if you are looking for a job or let's say that you put in an application, you know, 20 months ago, this could actually be finding its way back to you. Or even a project that you started in 2019, you could be seeing it again or making an adjustment to it at this particular time since the Mercury retrogrades also followed the path of water in 2019. And yet here we are again. On the 16th, we've got a new moon happening in the energy of Libra, 24 degrees. So this will light up your fifth house. And I do like this new moon for you in the fifth house because it is the opportunity to plant your seeds of intention for joy for play, for something you're willing and you're ready to take a risk on. And sometimes that's romance. Sometimes it's this hobby or this project that we're into. Maybe it's something with the children. And this has to do with partnership, being in balance here with Libra. So what you're doing here is you're saying, I'd like to be in balance. I'd like to be in relation in this area of my life. So whatever it is that you're planting to begin something new here, I love it for you. Because really, as we follow this over this next moon cycle, this next 
next 28 days and we come back to see what's come to fruition for you. I can't wait for you to put in the comment section down below. You're right, Stormy, I was working on joy or I, I, I manifested more joy in the area of my work or I manifested an easier time with my kids or an easier time getting my projects done or getting projects done in a joyful way. Whatever it is, I look forward to seeing what you create here. And yes, a new moon can absolutely sometimes bring a romance to your table. It absolutely can. Mars is still retrograde, so just take it nice and slow if you're able to, okay? As we get to the 22nd, we see the sun coming into the energy of Scorpio, joining Mercury up there as well. So again, bringing light, heat, life, and vitality. So there's a movement that's available here. There's a motivation that's available now in this sixth house arena for you. So health, daily routines, you're motivated to get a handle on these. With Mercury there, you are motivated to get them into the right alignment or see what's a part of my day and what's making me tick over here. Now, Mercury is going to move on in just a couple days into that energy of Libra, so come back there. But as you're here and you're motivated with the sun, it's almost this principle, I think, wherever the retrograde is happening, and for you it's in the sixth house, you have to have Mercury show you maybe a different way to do things, but you also need that sun driving forward for you to keep doing things the way that you've been doing them to see if they match up right? To say, oh, okay, right. This is why I would do this a different way. Or yeah, this is really working so I can move on to whatever's the next priority, okay? When we get to the 27th, that Mercury will officially move back into the energy of Libra. So now you'll have that retrograde going back through the fifth house as well. Hobbies, projects, joy, the children, all of those things, you'll move back and you'll begin to put some eyes on those as well. So if there was a project that you thought about starting or you did start and then you kind of put it down for a little bit, this would be a wonderful time during that Mercury retrograde to see if it's available to pick back up. Absolutely something that you loved. I want to put it in those words, something that you loved or you just were really on fire about it could be something that you're reviewing at this time as well. Now, as we end this month, we're going to get to the 31st and we have a full moon at in Taurus. Now, this moon is also going to be right there with Uranus. It's going to make that tight conjunction. So this is a surprising moon. This is a blue moon and it's going to be happening for you back up here in your 12th house. Okay, now this is Uranus. Uranus brings surprise, unexpected. I didn't see that coming. Once in a blue moon is literally what we say, right? So this could definitely be a moon for you where it's full. So ending, acknowledging, or adjusting, making a shift here in some way, but shedding a whole bunch of light on things that are in the 12th house space. And sometimes when I think about the 12th house space, I don't just think about the things that are hidden, but I think about the things that are maybe even hidden from us. Behavior patterns that we have that have maybe been in the way, or even behavior patterns, patterns that are really serving us pretty well, but at the full moon, they're either getting a lot of pressure put on them or they're asking to be adjusted so that they can continue to serve us well. But other things that I think of are the things that we can't see, sickness that maybe we can't see, that maybe there's light being shown on it, maybe a resentment that you had before, maybe there was a project, um, not so much a project, but maybe there was like research you were doing before or something you were interacting with that was in a quieter space that wasn't quite public yet. And at this full moon, it's going to shed those lights and say, let's let's clean this closet out. Right? Let's get these skeletons out of the closet, whatever they may be. But also, let's take some time to Taurus. Take care of yourself. Ground down, feed yourself, nourish yourself, massage yourself, Gemini. Spend some time with yourself in this next four weeks to make sure in your space, in your place of isolation, meditation, and the sacred that you are taking very, very, very good care of yourself and allowing some of that divine light to wash over you as well. All right, my beautiful Gemini friends, I do think it's going to be a useful month. We've got those three moons, so we are emotionally on the shuck and jive just a little bit, but I also feel like they're very, very well directed in, in what they're asking us to do and how they're assisting us in moving forward. So I look forward to seeing what's happening for you in the month. Please let me know in the comment section down below. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I hope to see you at the Astrology University Summit, which is October 3rd and 4th, and it is free to come to the summit and watch it live. 
live. If you want to see speakers and stuff after that, you can buy the all access pass, which I do think would be worth it. But either way, you can still see the summit for free. On October 17th, I'll be joining um, a Chutababa speaker series at the Nightlife Astrology. So come and check that out. There's also be a registration link in the description box down below for that. It's free. We just need you to register. And I hope to see you in all of the eat and greets. And I've got many, many more coming, you guys. We are lined up with astrologers into 2021 at this point. So yay. I just am so pumped to share it with you. All right, gems. Have a beautiful month. Bye, guys.